Well, good morning to you, my brothers and my sisters, both in Christ and in creation. My name is Pastor Jeremy Upton. I'm so grateful that you would take this time to worship with us today. I'm still in this series of How I Got Over, where we're using verses that you people like you just sent and said, these are the verses that the Holy Spirit is using to get me through. And I've been teaching through those, and I don't know about anybody else, but it's been blessing my spirit. I pray that you'll be blessed too through uh, the teaching of the word, through the worship, through the, the time that we share and spend together. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak something to your heart, to your life, that would be life-changing and life-transforming. So I welcome you to this worship experience. Let's see what the Lord wants to say to us as we enter into this experience. Refuge, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. And we thank you for the fact that you will always meet us at the point of our need. So Lord, we ask that right now you might meet us in the middle of this worship service, that you might touch hearts and minds, that you might uh, prepare a way for liberty to overtake us, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth in these moments to the end, that somebody might be transformed to look more like your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in that very name that we pray, amen and amen. All right, guys, it's time to go ahead and make some declarations. I'm going to throw them up on the screen right here. We should know half of them by now, but welcome to the Refuge Church, a safe place where everyone can grow one step closer to Jesus Christ every single day. Let's go ahead and say this part together. We are biblical, balanced, and beneficial in everything that we do. We are Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-filled, and kingdom-oriented, and we are built for this. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord wherever you at right now. Praise God, Refuge. I hope everyone is staying safe, and I hope everyone's doing well. Well, we've reached that time in our service where we pass the peace. If you're new to our ministry, this is where we virtually show the love of Christ to all partners, families, and friends. So please, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please leave a comment in the comment section below. So take out your phones, send somebody a text, send someone a selfie, say I love you, say I miss you, Give them a virtual hug, whatever you got to do. But let's pass the peace. I'll 
Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be Stay on right my lips. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Your praise will never be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy. We sing holy. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that as we come to this moment of studying the word of God, I pray that you would open our minds, open our eyes to see and receive and perceive that which you want to say to us. I thank you, O oh God, that your word is always true and it always works a thousand percent of the time. And so, Lord, I pray that you would use me in this moment as a conduit, as a communicator of that which you want to say to these your people. I pray that you'll anoint me afresh and use me for your glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, I declare you are my strength and my redeemer. Let your word come forth with clarity and with power to the end that some soul would hear it and their lives would instantaneously be encouraged, changed, and transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, listen, I'm still stuck on this, this How I Got Over season uh, series uh, because uh, it, it's, um, it's patterned after Revelation 12 and 11 where we overcome, the saints of God overcome, not only by the blood of the Lamb, which He's already provided, but by the word of their testimony, the Bible says. We, we got to talk our way through what we're going through. Uh, and so these verses have been blessing my life. I pray that you're blessing yours. And I want to point out one that somebody sent, um, just one single verse. Uh, but it's it's a powerful verse, so I want you to see it, uh, and let's let's see what God will say to us in this one verse in Galatians chapter six, verse nine. Galatians chapter six, verse nine. I'm reading from the New King James translation, but watch what the Bible says. Paul says, "And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart." One verse, but that's a powerful verse. And I want to talk about from that verse, keeping our eyes on the prize. How do we get over? How do we get through? We do it by keeping our eyes on the prize. Now, listen, is this one verse, and it's really, there's just two simplistic and yet obvious things I want us to initially see right out the gate from this verse. First of all, I want you to see that uh, if there is the command or if there is the encouragement, if there is the exhortation to not get weary, then that implies that getting weary is a distinct possibility. Uh, Paul says, let, let us not get weary. Apparently, everybody, including him, there is a tendency as we follow after God, if we, as we try to be obedient, there will be the tendency to get weary. But then secondly, I want you to see that when it says that there is a due season, I want you to notice that uh, as with any sports fan or, or even just a person who has a favorite season of the year, if there is a season that is your favorite season, it implies that there is at least one other kind of season. If you're one of those that you love summer, there's summer to you and then there's everything else. If you're a sports fan, then it's football season and then there's a not football season. Uh, right, that that there's at least this this season that you uh, enjoy, that you look forward to, and then there is the season where it's not being played. It doesn't matter how many other seasons there are, but if you say that there is a due season, that implies a duality, that there is a different or another kind of season. If there is a DUE season, where there is a harvest that's coming, then implied and implicit in the text. 
then there is a DO season. A DO or a do season is the season of actions. It's the planting, it's the cultivating, it's the nurturing, it's the watering, it's the working, it's the waiting. If there is a harvest season, then when it's not harvest season, if it's not DUE season, then it must be the DO season. It's either baseball season or it's the training season getting ready for the baseball season. I'm talking to my uh, nephew Bryce, just turned 15, amazing baseball player. It's not baseball season yet, but it is DO o season you need to be you need to be hitting the balls you need you need to be hitting the weights you need to get yourself ready because i'm getting ready for a season that is coming in the season that i currently am in and paul as he has set this whole thing up in this in this entire section of galatians 6 he's reminded believers to stick with their obedience and their commitment to living out and working out according to the example of Jesus Christ. And these commands then would be that DO aspect, that do season of the action of working and doing and being obedient. But in that, he, he wants them not just to keep their eyes on what they're doing in the DO season, he wants them to be motivated by what's coming in the DUE season. So he, he in essence says to them that there are benefits that belong to those who don't burn out. If we don't burn out in the DO season, then we'll be able to attain the DUE season. Are you following me? So if he's saying that if, if I'm in the DO season and in the DO season of the action and the working and the waiting and the watering, then that implies then if he says, let us not get weary, it means that there are some tendencies in the DO season to actually get tired. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of one of the things that's built into following after Jesus and being obedient and waiting on him and trusting him that there are going to be times when I get weary in my body. The, the idea, the word weary is the idea of losing motivation or being disappointed or being discouraged. Paul says, don't lose heart. Don't don't lose your motivation. Don't don't get tired of doing the right thing. Sometimes when we do, we saw that in Psalm 37, sometimes when we doing the right thing and somebody's doing the wrong thing, we get upset and we get tired of doing the right things. He, the, the, one of the tendencies that can happen in the DO season is to get tired, but then you can also get ticked off. Uh, you can get upset whether with other people who are getting over and getting by or maybe even God because he's not seeming to move as fast as we'd like him to move. I, I, that's why Paul has to say, don't get weary. Don't lose motivation yet. But then there's also the tendency to just turn off and decide I'm done with this. I'm through. I can't do this no more. I'm not seeing anything happening, happening from this. I, I can't. I, I'm not seeing results and benefits. And so I'm done. Paul says, let us not get weary. Because sometimes those things happen in, in a progression that we get tired, then we get ticked off, and then we turn off on God. But Paul says there are benefits that belong to those who don't burn out. So, so don't get weary. And I'm talking to somebody right now that if you need to take some me time, if you need to do some things to recharge your spiritual battery, if you need to ask the Lord to strengthen your spirit, strengthen your body, if you need to ask God to give you an extra reserve nerve, whatever it is, don't get burned out in the DO season because Paul says, I want you to keep your eyes on the prize of the DUE season. Now, now watch this. When, when he talks about the tendencies of the DO season, he then quickly points us to the treasure of the DUE season. He, he says there is that we will reap, right? Uh, this is the idea of results or benefits or the ability to lay claim on what was sown in the previous DO season. In other words, it's this idea of in the due season, there is this manifestation of the promises of God. Paul says that there is coming this season where you will see and experience the results and the benefits of everything that God has already promised. And even though it may have taken time in the DO season, that it will surely show up in the DUE season. Uh, look what the Bible says in Psalm 126 verse 5. It says, those who sow in tears shall, 
Show sure enough, it will happen, shall reap in joy. So Paul says, if you're, if you're tired, if you're getting weary, if you're seeing yourself follow this progression because you're getting sick and tired in this DO season, Paul says, I want you to put your eyes on the treasure that's coming in the DUE season. But now watch this. Here's what, here's what blows my mind from this verse. It's not just the tendencies of the DO season. It's not just the treasure of the DUE season, but it's the timing of the DUE season. Uh, watch this. He says that there is coming a due season where we will reap the benefits of having sown in faith and in tears and in trusting God. It, it's, it's this idea that I have to build up some resilience and some endurance and some patience. And I even have to make peace with God's pace so that I don't burn out in the DO season by keeping my eyes on what's going to come in the DUE season. Watch this. Paul uses this, this strange phraseology. He, he takes the word kairos, which is the, the word for God's kind of timing instead of clocks watches and calendars. It's more like cycles and seasons. It's this idea of an appointed time. And then he adds to it this other little adverbial word that, that gives it the idea of the appropriate moment or the proper time, that the due season is coming at the proper time. One translator says that it's the moment of time that is exactly right for you. And I'm here to tell somebody in this moment, that based upon Galatians 6 and 9, that if you and I will keep trusting God and stay enduring, patiently obedient to what God has called us to do in the DO season, that there is a date that God has set in the DUE season where the benefits and the promises of God will manifest specifically for you in the way that will best benefit and bless you. If you will not grow weary, if you don't faint, if you don't get tired, I'm here to declare to somebody, according to Galatians 6 and 9, your due season is coming. That God has set up a date. That the idea of due season is kind of like April 15th for us in, in, the, in the American West. That that is a date that has been set based upon somebody else's authority where they anticipate and inspect certain things will be due on that day. Now, you can try to change it. You can try to wheel and deal. You can try to get an extension. But on April 15th, that's the day that taxes are due. God says on the flip side, I have by my authority set a date where I have it in my mind where it will be perfectly set up specifically for you that the promises that you are waiting for your faithfulness, the promises that I have set aside for your obedience, it's going to come due on a specific date and on a specific time, and it's going to show up just for you. You. And if you can keep your eyes on what is coming because of the faithfulness of our God, Paul says it will help us not get tired or ticked off or turned off in the DO season because of the timing of the DUE season. Listen, the Bible is clear. The benefits of God belong to those who don't burn out. So I want to pray specifically for some people who are, uh, you're, let's be honest, you're getting weary in well-doing. But I'm here to tell you, based upon the promises of the Word of God, your due season, your D-U-E season is coming. God has seen your faithfulness in your D-O season. He's seen your tears. He's seen your, your, your faithful waiting. He's seen your endurance. And if you can just hold on by keeping your eyes on the prize, the Word of God declares that God has set up a date that will be the due season. It'll be the right, appropriate, exact right time for you. Well, God will let you see the manifestations of everything that he's promised. Can I pray for us? Father, we thank you. We bless you in the name of Jesus that we serve the kind of God, that we serve a Savior who sees even when we sow in tears. He sees when we struggle. He sees our desire to, to obediently and faithfully follow you. And you have declared and decided that there is a due season and a right time, a proper time, where you will manifest all of your promises to your people. So Lord, I pray that you would strengthen every heart. I pray that you would encourage every person. I pray that you would fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and let us keep working and doing the things we need to do in the DO season, because we can stand on the promise of the DUE season. 
we love you and we bless you. We're thankful for all that you do and all that you are in our lives. And we look forward to what you will show us in the DUE season because you have counted us faithful in the DO season. In Jesus' name, amen. We just have a couple of announcements for you. If you don't mind, I'm gonna need you to take out your phone because this might be for you. If you are interested in learning more about Jesus, all you gotta do, do me a favor, take out that phone and text the word CROSS to the number that you see on the screen. Maybe you already know about the Lord and you already saved, but you wanna become a partner with the Refuge Church. So take out your phone and text the word PARTNER to that same number that you see on the screen and someone will walk you through the steps to becoming a partner with the Refuge Church. Maybe you're already a partner and you're already saved, but you wanna serve. We have something just for you also. Just text the word serve to the number that you see on the screen and we will walk you through the steps on how to assist us with our online ministry. Now this Wednesday night, don't forget, Kingdom Secrets Bible Study. You're gonna to wanna to put it in your phone so you can get that text message. It's all about that phone today. Listen, take out that phone, put it in there real quick and you will get the notification on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Kingdom Secrets Bible Study. God bless each and every one of you. Can't wait to see each one of you real soon. Well, listen, it's offering time in the house of God. It's time to bless God with our gifts of tithe, offering, love offering. Listen, if this is your first or your second time with us, we don't ask you to give anything. Uh, but if you're a partner, if you're a regular attender, if you're connected with this ministry, you know what the responsibilities and the expectations are. Now, I just got done talking about Galatians 6 and 7, uh, uh, Galatians 6 verse 9. But if you go back and look at 7, 8, and 9, Paul talks about the fact that God, God's not going to be tricked. Whoever is sowing, those are the ones who's going to be reaping. You, you can't rob God and think you'll still get the harvest and the reaping of the harvest. And so I'm, I'm challenging us. Let's, let's continue to be faithful to God. Let, let's not try to trick him. Let's not try to tip him. Uh, you can see there's four different ways that you can give. And so that we've tried to remove all the excuses of why you can't. Uh, even if your excuse is, well, I don't have enough, I would declare to you that based upon what we just read, you can't afford not to trust God and to be faithful in those things. And so I'm gonna ask that you prepare your heart, prepare your, your, your gift, prepare your device, whatever you need to do, and let's give as unto the Lord. Let me pray over our offering time. Lord, we bless you, we thank you, we magnify your name that even though we see all of these uh, bad news, all of these bad things that should be happening in this economy, our trust isn't in a government, our trust isn't in a dollar, our trust is in the God who keeps promises. We're, our trust is in the God of the D-U-E season. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, as we give to you, as we worship you in giving. We thank you, O oh God, that we're, we find ourselves on the right side of what happens for those who are faithful to you. And so, Lord, I ask that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings we wouldn't have room enough to receive, whether it's for the tither, whether it's for those who are sowing offering, or even those who are sowing love offering. Keep your word. Bless these gifts. Bless each giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I pray that something was said, something was sung, something from the Word of God spoke to you and spoke to your heart and let you know that you're in the right place, the right space, and that your DUE season is coming as long as you stay faithful to do what God has called you to do in the DO season. Let me pray for this our next week. Father, we thank you. We bless you for all that you've said, all that you're doing. We receive your word and we will act on it. We will operate like those who have already won victory, not those who are striving for the victory because Jesus already won the victory on the cross. And so Lord, we thank you and we bless you for all that you're going to do and show all the ways that you will make in this next week. I pray that as we depart from this worship experience, that your spirit would rest, rule, and abide on each of us and keep us in perfect peace as our minds are stayed on you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Listen, have a great week. May God bless you to overflowing. I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. I can't wait to see you next week. May God bless you and keep you.